the Origami mobile app makes it easy for remote users to enter data. You start by defining what data remote users are allowed to enter. Let's take a look at that. You first go to the admin section to define your mobile forms. Just like Origami lets you define regular forms for data entry, you also define mobile forms for your mobile users. Here you see I've got a few mobile forms set up. Let's take a look at one. Here's an incident form for an injured employee. Mobile forms are mostly like regular forms, but they have a few more parameters to control how they're used. Here at the top you see it's an incident form. You can decide what roles this form should be deployed to, so maybe only certain users are allowed to enter incident reports based on their role. For incidents, we want to make it really easy to report an incident, so that's deployed to all roles. We set it as active, and you'll notice there's an Is Child Form checkbox. I'll explain that in a minute. You can define what devices this form applies to. Is it just for phones, just for tablets? But in most cases, you can say any device. The submission security is important because in a mobile app, once you log in one time, you don't have to log in every single time you go to the app. If you want, you can force the user to log in again when they submit a new form. But again, for incidents, we want to make it easy, so we're going to let them submit the form without re-entering the password. The action type determines when the form can appear on the mobile app. Do you want to be able to start a brand new thing, in this case an incident, right from your device? Well, that makes sense for incidents. But in some cases, you might want the record to already exist in origami and then push it out to the mobile device to update data. That might make sense in the case of values collection, where the location should exist. You might select Send Existing Records to App. Again, this is incidents. Let's make it easy. You can specify if you want people to be able to attach photos and videos directly from the phone or tablet. If they do, you can specify a folder for those files to go to or leave it blank for no folder. And here you see three optional child forms. You can kind of think of these as subforms. If you have an incident, you might have one or more witnesses to the incident. So in this case, we're allowing one type of child form, that being a witness. And then the form configuration below is really just like regular forms in origami. All the things you're used to using, formulas, code dependencies, toggle fields, they'll all work on your mobile device. So now I came back to the mobile forms list because I want to show you that witness which we listed as a child form for incidents. Here this is the case where you do check the is child form because you never enter just a witness, it's got to be a witness to something. So this is a very simple form just with basic contact information that can be added on to other forms. Now for something like incident entry, you may have lots of people in the field entering these incidents. Just like Origami supports anonymous links and anonymous portals, you may not want to be managing user IDs and passwords for all of these users. In Origami you can create what we call a shared login for mobile. What this does is it creates a six-digit PIN that you can give to your users when they want to log into the mobile app. That makes it easy for them to log in, but allows you to control exactly what they're allowed to do. Okay, so here's the app on my iPad. You indicate your account, in this case we're calling it Origami Mobile, and you sign in. So the first time you log into the app, it's going to ask you how you want to log in. Are you a regular origami user with a username and password, or are you a shared login with a six-digit code? Well, I just showed you the shared login, so let's do that. I enter the code, press sign in, and since it's the first time I've done this, of course I have no saved forms. If I want to create a new form, click the plus button. These are the forms that were created in origami with the setting that you can create them brand new from the app. So in this case, the injured employee, which I showed you, and also a damaged company vehicle. So if I touch the injured employee report link, so here you see the form, completely customizable. Maybe we're piloting this in the Boston office, so we want to pre-fill the location to make it easy. Defaulting report date and loss date and loss time to right now. You can have lookups, user lookups, 
that are restricted to a specific role to limit the list to your adjusters. Required fields are indicated just like in origami. You can look up addresses using Google Maps. I use my iPad's GPS to default to my current location. But maybe the accident happened on the corner of Montague and Clinton. I simply move the pin, click the check, and origami pre-fills the address information based on what I selected on the map. We can do an employee lookup to get the employee data. And again, origami will fill in the appropriate fields based on the employee information in the system. And here at the bottom, you see the ability to enter witnesses. That's because we added witnesses as a child form. So I touch the witnesses icon, and now I can add one or many witnesses. So I'm lazy, I just entered the name and the phone number, press done. If there's more than one witness, no problem. Enter the other witness, press done. And maybe you want to take a picture of what happened. If I press new photo, I can take a picture right there, or new video, take a picture right there. If you already took the picture and you want to just attach it, you can do pick a photo. My daughter apparently borrowed my iPad, so we'll attach Elsa. You can take as many pictures as you want. I think one else is enough. And then if I'm done, I can submit it right away. I can save it as complete, which is handy if you're not connected to the internet. So you can submit it later. Or you can save it as a draft because, you know, I'm not really done. I'm going to come back to it later. So in this case, I'm back to the main page. Shows my draft injured employee report. I even get a thumbnail of Elsa. So from here, I can add more. Here's the damaged company vehicle form. Another address lookup for the accident. And the app can track it down to the latitude and longitude of the accident. So you can enter your data. And you'll notice in this case, this form had two child entities attached. I can attach witnesses and other vehicles. And of course, pictures and video. And again, pressing done gives me these options. Maybe I'll say that's complete. So now you see I've got one draft and one ready to go. I check over the incident report. Yeah, that really is fine. Now I can say that's complete. Now everything's ready, and when I get back to where I have internet again, I can submit them all at once. So Origami tells me I'm about to send them, and away they go. Here we are back in Origami on the incidents page. Here we see our injured employee and our damaged company vehicle, the injured employee, the two witnesses, and of course Elsa. So that's how easy it is to enter incident data with the Origami mobile app. But what if you want to update data in origami? Maybe you're collecting exposure value data for each location and you want to push that out to various people's devices. Now in this case, they might be origami users and you might want some automated workflow. Here's how you could do that. Back in the mobile forms page, we have a location form. The form has exposure value and coke data. But you'll notice under action types, we're only sending existing records to the app. The location's got to exist, then we want to push it out to somebody to update data. Maybe we want somebody to update data on the Atlanta Distribution Center. Here you see we're already tracking the value collection user. Happens to be me. Wouldn't it be nice if there was a workflow that automatically pushed it out to my mobile device? Why yes, yes it would. In the administration section, we can create data entry events to push out mobile forms. Here you see I've got a location event to send the mobile location form. You can see we've set it up. If the update requested date field is updated, and there's an actual value collection user, that will trigger this event, and the action is to send the mobile form. So you see the send mobile form actions, you specify which form you want to send, and you specify what user it's going to go to. So it can go to individual specific users, it can be the person who triggers the event, or in this case, a value collection user, a user that we're storing on the location record. And if you'd like, we can also send an email to that user to make sure they know. So with that event in place, all I have to do is request the update today and click Save Changes. So now we're back in the app, but in this case, I'm going to log in as me. I have a username and password. So I enter my ID and password and sign in. Now this is the first time I've logged in as me, so again, there's nothing there. 
but because the form has been pushed out to me, when I press refresh, it shows up right away. So here you see the mobile form with the location stuff already filled in because it's been filled in. But we do have a value section where we've got the actuals from 2015. We'd like the estimates for 2016. And we can update the COPE data. When you're done, same thing. Save that, ready to go. Of course, if you're using the app a lot, you're going to end up with a bunch of forms in various states. Some finished, some in draft, some brand new. Origami makes it easy to search, find the ones you want. These are my new ones. That one's in draft status. Or I can look at them all. And of course, when they're all ready to go, you press the send all button. And Origami syncs them up. That's how easy it is to enter data with the mobile app and to control the data being entered with the mobile app using Origami Risk.